Well, this is Monday of Thanksgiving week. We have things to be thankful for. I'm just going to give you a few of those things that within this very month of November that we are thankful for today. Monday morning. Welcome to All Things Apostolic. We are glad that you are here with us on Monday morning. You always need a sip of coffee out of your old um, uh, Apostolic School of Theology mug. That shows you how old this mug is. It, uh, Apostolic School of Theology was the former name uh, of Wilson University. And when we first started, uh, before we uh, were independent, and uh, so, the, but the mugs are still good, and the doctrine is still good. So we're glad you're with us here uh, on this Monday morning. What's a date today? November the something. Uh, anybody know? Let me look it up here. November the twentieth, and uh, this is Thanksgiving week. Yes, this is, we have now officially entered the holidays for 2023. So it's just a little over a month until we're into 2024. And it's just, in, it's just incredible that this year has flown by so quick. But it has been a very effective and successful year. And I hope that's true with you also, but I know a lot of people who have accomplished incredible things in 2023 and progress in churches across the country, uh, 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 people getting saved, uh, people's lives being transformed, miracles taking place, um, church buildings being paid off uh, at, a, at a clip, a, a rate that I have never before seen. God's, God's helping his people. And uh, this is a season for us to take advantage of the fact that the window of blessing is open. And uh, I don't know everything about cycles and spiritual things, but in if the spiritual matches at all the natural, there are cycles and there are some years of bounty and there's some years that can be quite slim. And so <clears throat> we are thanking God for his goodness to us and we're trying to walk in his blessing and in his bounty. And we're trying to uh, manifest that and model that to the world, that here's what this really is. Our modeling is not a fake. It's not something we put on. It's a, it's a realistic living out of the blessings of God and the revelation about the blessings of God. And so we're very thankful for it. On top of all of that, I hope that all of you uh, had a great Sunday yesterday, and also have had a great year, and also have had a great November to date. So um, in four days will be Thanksgiving. This week we're going to talk, we're actually going to give you a little bit of, of a history of Thanksgiving, the history of Thanksgiving um, and its origin. The, there's only one eyewitness that was there on the first Thanksgiving. And uh, he wrote less than 150 words about it. But what he wrote was pretty eye-opening about the first Thanksgiving. So we'll talk about that this week, God willing. And, uh, uh, and we'll also maybe talk a little bit about being grateful for the things that God has done. And we are grateful for this Monday and the reports that we are able to give of what the Lord is doing. In fact, November has been, for us locally, has been a great month. It's been a great month. It started out on uh, November, I think, 2nd and 3rd was Momentum, which is an annual youth meeting here at uh, at the Rock Church. And um, uh, our youth pastor, Boston Young and his wife Haley and the youth team uh, put this together. Uh, it was their concepts of, of what would be good for young people. And in that, 
they decided that this youth meeting, rather than having all the latest bells and whistles, would go the other way and would go back to origins. Where did we come from as a people of God? And um, so the whole sanctuary was turned into a tent, major, major deal to do all of that. Uh, the, <clears throat> the regular lighting was turned off and brush arbor and tent lighting was used throughout the sanctuary. It's a little hard to see in the back there. There wasn't enough light, but, um, but that's the way it was in those brush arbor days. And that's the way it was with those, uh, uh, tent meeting days, both of which I have been a part of. So, and sometimes there was no tent or brush arbor. It was just outside in a uh, in a yard or in a field uh, or in a barn sometimes. I've been in all those places and, um, and worshiped and testified and preached the gospel and been a part of what God was doing. And so the young people all went back. They actually had little songbooks made, they, like back to songbooks. And, and uh, they chose and used uh, many, uh, a good number of old songs, songs that all of us would remember that some of those young people had to learn to sing at Momentum because they didn't know those old songs. So they had to learn them. They were new songs to them. They had to learn them so they could sing them. Um, and so it was a great meeting. <clears throat> there was about uh, 2,000 young people there. It was, uh, it was powerful. They had a lot of fun. Uh, the last night at the church, of course, every night there's great supervision, but the last night at the church, young people hung out there until uh, early hours of the morning uh, because they were uh, excited to be together, and uh, the Holy Ghost lingered. The, the preaching was incredible. The, uh, uh, Brother Nathan Holmes preached on Thursday night did an incredible job. Pick me was the name of his message. Pick me. And that was about commitment, um, a, a, a perfect message for young people. And then uh, the next morning was uh, Pastor Jonathan Sanders, who preached from Kermit, California, who is a tremendous evangelist and preacher and now a pastor with a rapidly growing church. I'm so excited about it. I'm just just really excited about it, uh, and God's doing miraculous things for that church. Uh, but anyway, he preached. Uh, if you, if I, I'm sure all of this is still somewhere on the internet, but if you can go and find momentum and find the messages that was preached there, including Brother Sanders, uh, you, you're you're going to be blessed for a youth meeting. I don't know how there could have been uh, better preaching, and then and then Friday night, the finale. Um, Brother Luke St. Clair preached from Anderson, Indiana, and did he ever preach? It was such a tremendous, tremendous move of God. The Holy Ghost fell, and in Momentum, which was uh, for apostolic young people, I think 11 new people received the Holy Ghost and uh, one or two perhaps baptized, uh, but I, uh, these that received the Holy Ghost were brand new people, young people. And so it was really an exciting time. Anyway, uh, it was over Friday night. Well, I should say it was over Saturday morning. And then all of these young people went home. Um, <clears throat> and Sunday we had service at the Rock Church and uh, seven more people received the Holy Ghost Sunday. And uh, one was baptized in Jesus' name. I think one also received the Holy Ghost at La Roca, which is Spanish services uh, in, uh, in, uh, on Sunday afternoon uh, with uh, Pastor Gerardo Diaz. Then um, uh, last Sunday, which would be yesterday, six more received the Holy Ghost last night, and uh, two were baptized, the two that were baptized the, was a woman and her daughter, a young woman and her daughter, uh, who had never been to the Rock Church, but she said, I've driven by uh, numerous times, and uh, uh, she said, I've wanted to come in 
and know more about it. And she came in and somebody got to talking to her, being friendly and witnessing to her and talked to her. She said, well, I'm Catholic. And this, this brother had been Catholic before he came to God. He said, well, I'm Catholic too. He said, so you believe the Pope is, uh, uh, that the Apostle Peter was the first Pope. She said, yes, that's, that's right. And he said, well, let me, let me show you what the first Pope then preached. And um, he, he proceeded to show for Acts 2.38 and, uh, and what he preached and that he was the man that Jesus gave the keys to and so forth. And she said, well, I want to be baptized. So her and her daughter were baptized at the same time. She was on one end of the baptistry and her daughter was on the other end of the baptistry and they both were baptized um, at the same time, in the tank at the same time. Interesting, interesting, interesting thing. So we are thankful for these. This is this is November the 20th. So, so far, I didn't even add that up. That's what, 24, 25, it's received the Holy Ghost um, and uh, a good number baptized. Then um, two Sundays ago, there was one that got the Holy Ghost in the foothills, the Rock Church in the foothills. Then uh, there was two that got the Holy Ghost in Winters, which is a little town near Sacramento where uh, is the Rock Church West. Uh, two got the Holy Ghost there. Um, and then one received the Holy Ghost in Rosarito, which is uh, in Baja, Mexico, uh, <clears throat> where one of our young couples is, uh, Pastor Peyton Bradford and London Bradford are pastor there in Rosarito, uh, uh, missionaries. And then uh, let's see what else happened. Um, two received the Holy Ghost in Costa Rica, which is a brand new work in which uh, Brother Victor and Elizabeth are there. And they have just been sent there. They went there from the Rock Church and they are another young couple. And uh, he said to receive the Holy Ghost and 17 were baptized in Jesus' name. And he's only been there about a month now, maybe six weeks. And so all of these good things are taking place uh, in the first 20 days of November. So what's God going to do if we just stay on track here? Now, there's, there's, this is not just limited to... Sacramento. There are there are churches across California and across America and beyond apostolic Pentecostal churches who are experiencing revival on an unprecedented level. So how do we how do we get to this place? Well, um, in in three minutes, I can't tell all that. I don't. I probably couldn't tell it all if I had three hours because I don't know everything. But I do know that revival is for us. And I do know that there are certain paradigmatic mindsets that we can develop over the years that we think are what apostolic Pentecost really is, that really are not what apostolic Pentecost really is. We get set in those, but we, um, we also get familiar with them, and, which brings a level of comfort. And then we stay in that comfort level and uh, it's hard for us to jar out of that. And if anybody, if anybody threatens that comfort level, we oppose them. If we're not careful, we're, we're, we can be unconscious of the fact that we are opposing the very thing that would make their church explode with revival. But to do that, there are certain mindsets and certain things that we've been enculturated into that are uh, antithetic to revival. They are, they are, the, the mind has to understand uh, how God does things, not how uh, we have traditionally done some things. Uh, so uh, this gospel, this gospel, this salvation message of repentance, <clears throat> water baptism in the only saving name, Jesus Christ, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, as modeled on the day of Pentecost, how else are you going to model receiving the Holy Ghost except what the Bible says on the birthday of the church? Whoever came up with something better than that, especially when it's uh, preached 
by the man, the only man in the history of the universe, not just the history of the world, the only man in the history of the universe that was ever given the keys to the kingdom and told whatever you bind will be bound and whatever you loose will be loosed was the apostle Peter. And he's the one that preached this. So whoever you're following that has, thinks they got better ideas, you, you know, that's up to you. But uh, it's hard for me to think that uh, there's a better model than the Bible for having a Bible experience and going to a Bible-believing church. So anyway, um, uh, all of these things, all of these things, I've, 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 got, I've had people get so mad when you preach about these things and when you talk about these things. And yet they're not having revival like we're talking about and like they had in the Bible and, and that which is biblical. They're not. They're not. There are some that are, many that are, but these that are not are by far the bigger group. And uh, so I often wonder, well, what, are, what are you waiting on? Why don't you just say, because somebody can kind of help me here to know how to get on the right track. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. <clears throat> But it does mean that all of us can do better. So anyway, Monday report, that's all the time I've got. But uh, thank you for being with us. And tomorrow we got some more good things to tell you about.